I made a late Victorian, early Edwardian corset using a pattern. A pattern I'd used before, mind you, with mixed results. This time it worked. Why? Well, let's take a look at that. I'm going to show you all the things I did wrong, and then how I corrected those mistakes the second time around. Here we go. Here's the funny thing about directions. Sometimes, often, if you follow them, things work properly. The drawback is that not everyone communicates equally well. Sometimes the bulk of the directions are okay, but there's a misprint or there's a small flaw in the pattern. Sometimes it's a problem with how you, the maker of the garment, parse the directions on the page. And sometimes the directions are fine, but your body has its own issues you need to navigate. And you have to make a couple of attempts before you can get a good result. This is why we make mock-ups. It would be great if we could get a perfect result the first time, but... <sighs> Often that's not how things shake loose. If you're one of those rare unicorns who manages to get things right the first time, leave me a comment with your incredible life hacks because you obviously know something I do not. I've had two false starts. The Truly Victorian TVE 01-1903 Edwardian corset and the red threaded Victorian corset circa 1870-1890. The Edwardian is too small and the red threaded was too large. In both cases I used the basic pattern pieces, skimped the directions unless there was something I really needed to focus on, and otherwise followed the beat of my own drummer. The last time I checked in with my great corset adventure, I was taping together schematics from the Symington collection in Leicestershire, England, and talking about possibly scaling one up for personal use. At the risk of sounding incredibly ableist, the tongue-in-cheek definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over, expecting different results. Yes, both corsets are constructed differently, but my method of making them was not. I went looking for my underbust drafting information and couldn't find it. I decided to put that on the back burner and go directly to the overbust. I spent the better part of two weeks staring at a Symington schematic trying to size it up to my measurements. I was on the right track. There's a method of sizing up that works on a percentage system, but I think it works best for folks who aren't dealing with, well, morbid obesity. Believe it or not, without all this extra fat on my body, I actually have an hourglass figure. And because I'm long-waisted, I'm super squishy, making my corseted form into an extreme hourglass. Even at overweight, this was manageable. At the weight I'm currently carrying, it's hard to reconcile the image in my head with the measurements on the page. According to the directions, the lines are moving out, not in. And that just bakes my noodle because it's a corset. Things are supposed to get smaller not bigger. Frankly, it's easier to let someone else draft the pattern and use my time and energy to put together some healthy menus and maybe do a little cooking instead of the order in dinner and support the food services industry because otherwise more people will be unemployed trap that the past year's socially distant lifestyle has forced in the middle class. There was a thread on Instagram this past week about how more pattern designers need to be supporting bodies larger than mine, and I fully agree. If I can find it, I'll link it below. But as I sat there looking at Adobe Illustrator and seeing the lines moving in all the wrong directions, I realized I was about to stumble back into that same trap of throwing myself into a project without any forethought, ultimately just making things more difficult for myself. Here's the fun part. I was looking at a corset that, at its essence, was very similar to the red threaded pattern. What was wrong with my first attempt at the red threaded pattern? I made it a three layer corset because I was worried about the sturdiness and lining. Fair enough. I skimped on the seam allowances, not trusting either my measurements or the measurements of the corset. The resulting corset was too large. Seriously, that reveal shot never gets old. Hit the thumbs up button if you agree.
There wasn't enough boning, and while I'd ordered the lengths specified in the pattern, my placement was wonky. A couple of the bones seemed a bit short, and a couple were a bit too long, probably because I was trying to fill in the gaps with extra steel from another project. I bailed out of the front modesty panel because, again, multiple layers, but also I just couldn't wrap my brain around the construction. Finally, there were a couple of errors in the pattern. The back lacing panel was too short, or its adjoining edge was too long, and one of the front pieces was too short on one edge, so it didn't fit up with its neighbor. Could I have salvaged the pink corset? Sure. I love that silly pink fabric. I could have ripped the seams and possibly replaced some of the boning with cable ties. Or I could take everything I learned on the pink corset and make something else. Something possibly better. I reread the directions. This time, they made more sense. That's the benefit of approaching a project from a position of experience. The first thing I did was reprint the pattern, because I'd chopped the last one up to make those multiple layers. I also filled in the blanks in the pattern so the pieces would fit together properly. I zigzagged and, in one case, overlocked the sides, which seriously cut down the amount of fraying and thus lessened the need for aligning. It was worth using the extra thread. I didn't want little stray threads all over the place. Twill and denim love to fray, which... life hack. Save yourself about $30 to $100 in expensive designer frayed look jeans by just using a pair of scissors and your standard laundry machines. I saw that fad crop up again a couple of years ago and couldn't believe people were paying that much for pants with holes in them. Personally, I like my jeans intact, but this is Canada and it gets cold here. Very few Canadians need that much ventilation. Well. Maybe the British Columbians and Southern Ontarios and any other province that gets a relatively predictable summer season. After that, I followed the instructions. I'm not saying I followed them perfectly. I went off the beaten path a couple of times, but more often than not, I ripped those experiments back and tried again, referring to the actual pattern notes. The one experiment I'm keeping in place, I doubled my boning channels at the seams by pressing open my seam allowances and top stitching. Was I scared the corset wouldn't hold up to the stress of supporting a larger body? Yes. Would the corset be sturdier if I pressed the seams to the back of the corset as directed? Also yes. Did I try it anyway? Yes. Am I more concerned about adding the extra boning? Yes, 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 yes. I'll have what she's having. Sometimes you have to take a leap of faith and trust the instructions. If it didn't work, I could always rip everything back and start over. To be frank, this is a one-layer corset. It has no lining, it has no extra fabric to stabilize whatever the twill is doing. It's just the one layer, some boning channels, a bit of grosgrain ribbon, some steel, some plastic, and a lot of thread. If it came down to it, I could flatline or fuse some fashion fabric to the twill to stabilize it. I've already proven that I'm not above gutting an old corset for its parts, so why not tear down the work in progress? What I learned from this process is that since it is only a single layer corset, as long as I wasn't grating down the seams or otherwise poking holes in the fabric, I could just rip out any mistakes and start over, which the temptation to cut your fabric on multi-layer corsets is strong. Not so much on a single layer because there's a lot less bulk. Also, if I totally messed up one of the panels, I could just cut out another one. Less overall fabric waste. Personally, I'm hoping to prove the theory of survivor bias and historical costume by losing some weight and having to size down all my clothes, I may eventually get to wear that nice burgundy truly Victorian corset uh, without requiring lacing assistance. I dug out some old heavy-duty cable ties to supplement the flat and spiral steel bones. I know Red Threaded likes to use spiral as much as possible, but I've seen it buckle under strain and I'm rather squishy, so mixing it with the plastic isn't a bad idea. If this corset has enough time to break in before I have to make another, I'll probably just transfer the component parts over. That way, if the plastic starts molding to my shape, I'll be a step or two closer to having the new one broken in. I suspected you could round the edges of the cable ties with a manicurist's e-file, and I was correct. 
I use the e-file and carbide bits I use for doing my nails. You can find both fairly inexpensively on Amazon if you're not above incidentally financing the Bezos. You'll find a couple of links in the description. You can use them for your own personal gel manicure or your cheap boning alternative. I'm not going to judge. I just know that it files down acrylic gel, fake plastic nails, and cable ties, which is good because I'd rather not have a hard pointy bit digging into my side and making my life miserable. With the stays sorted, it's time to bind the edges. The back edge of the binding on the inside of the corset covers the ends of most of the casings with a couple of areas that need a bit of reinforcing. I have a plan for that, but that's for down the line. So with that in mind, we'll move on to grommeting the lacing panel. I put a poll up on the community tab of the YouTube channel, and while a couple of folks had a been there, done that attitude, the rest of you were overwhelmingly in favor of the aesthetic grommet press action. For those of you who wondered what a grommet press is, keep watching. What's the next step after this? Well, a black corset was probably a poor choice of garment for the camera to pick up, but I think it will look stunning with a bit of flossing. And because it's black twill, it should wear nicely both under and over clothing. Obviously, I plan to have a foundation layer like a t-shirt or a tank underneath, taking the place of a traditional chemise. an idea for the flossing which should give the corset just a bit more flair and definition. That adventure unfortunately is for another time. Till then! <laughs> <laughs>